Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing with you five useful Chrome DevTools features that are going to help you along your web development journey. Now, some of these you may already know, but some of them you may not. Now, they're going to involve uh, things like filtering, uh, also mocking data and just uh, general um, ease of use. So we're going to begin by looking at how you can uh, access the currently selected elements in the elements section. So right here, I've got a few things going on on the page, a title, a paragraph, a unordered list and a button. So going inside the elements section here, uh, if I was to, for example, select this unordered list, we can see that um, we have this highlighted row. This dollar sign zero is actually telling you that you can reference this inside the console to get access to this element. So if I was to just say dollar sign zero here, press enter, we have the unordered list. If I go back in the element section and now choose the page title, do it again, it's gonna be the page title. It's also important to note that you can, uh, you know, call methods on these, uh, you know, this dollar sign zero as you would normally. So for example, if I go onto the button here, I can now say dollar sign zero dot click and I can access that click method to programmatically click the button. So all of this here is, yeah, just a standard JavaScript object which you can interact with. So that right there can be handy when you are debugging and trying to figure out, you know, which element is causing the issue or, you know, trying to figure out the value for an element, whatever it might be, uh, this definitely comes in handy. Next on this list, we have live expression. So at the top here in your console, you're going to notice this eye icon. If you click on this, it's going to create a new live expression. What is a live expression? Well, this basically is going to uh, automatically compute as you uh, keep your console open. So let's say, for example, I declare a, uh, a variable called A equal to 10, okay? I can make a new one called B equal to 20. Now, inside live expression, let's say A times B, okay? Press enter and we get 200 right there. So if I was to change B to be something like 40 now, we can see when I press enter, the live expression is going to update straight away. This can be any expression in JavaScript. You may even just want to have a place to hold a variable. For example, I can just say B here. Okay, press enter. Now I'm always going to see what B is equal to. I can call methods down here that may change B. But as long as I can see it at the top here, I'm always keeping track of what B is. Next up, we're going to have a look at the throttle network speed feature. So going back inside VS Code here, I've got an image inside my directory structure here, which is a photo of uh, Queenstown in New Zealand. Now, I'm going to simply uh, include this as an image on the page here. So I'll say image source, then say images forward slash the image file and just say New Zealand as the alt text. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, and we can see that, of course, this is going to load straight away. The reason why it loads straight away is because, well, it's not a, it's not a huge image, but also it is being served locally on my machine. So I can't see any sort of loading here. It's all very instant. Now, let's say, for example, you have uh, an API request that might take a couple of, uh, seconds to come back or even half a second to come back and you want to display a loading animation. Uh, well, you may be a bit disappointed because you're not able to see that loading animation on your local machine and the same may go for an image like this one. Basically, whenever there's a request to a external file, image, an API request and you have a loading animation, in order to see that locally, sometimes, like I said, uh, it's too quick to actually be visible. So we can actually uh, slow down the network speed so you can see things happen. If I go into the network tab here, I can go to this top section which says no throttling. I can expand this and we can see here there are a few presets for us to choose from. Now, I'm going to say slow 3G. Now, this image file here is about uh, 1.4 megabytes in size. So I'm hoping that 
uh, it's going to be enough uh, to demonstrate what this feature is. So if I refresh the page here, we can see immediately the page is a lot slower and yeah, it's taking, well, it took a bit of time to come back. I might actually just clear my cache here because it may be, it may be cached. Let me just try again and we'll see how we go. I'm kind of hoping it's going to load slower than that. And there we go. So we can see here, it's literally loading as I'm talking and it took, yeah, it took an ex extra well, a few seconds to load that back. So you're able to, yeah, essentially make your network requests go slower. I recommend that you uh, you load the page first with the throttling set to no throttling. And that way you can load the page as per usual because it's going to be async, right? Then once you want to start testing your loading animations, etc., you can switch to slow 3G and perform an action and yeah, mimic that that th uh, that that slow network speed. Now you've also got an option to say offline. If I refresh the page now, it's just going to say no internet. So if you need to test offline apps and you know uh, progressive web apps, things like that, well. You can, of course, uh, use that feature. So yeah, comes in handy for sure. Next up on this list is going to also involve mocking data, but this time we're going to be mocking the user's location. So when you want to use the geolocation API to get your user's uh, location, uh, if you want to test this in places other than your own location on your development machine, then you can use this feature. So if you go into the top right corner, the three dots here, and go down to more tools, there's gonna to be a lot of things you can uh, have a play with here, but if I go down to sensors, we have a location sensor here in Google Chrome. I can use the drop down menu and I can change uh, the location. For example, let's set this one to London, okay? And now this is just telling me what the location is gonna be if I attempt to fetch it using JavaScript. So. Let's close this off here, then go inside my JavaScript file. I can now say navigator.geolocation.getCurrentPosition uh, and then I'm going to have the success callback just here with the position parameter. And I'm just going to simply console log what the position uh, is gonna be. So if I save this, go back in the browser here, we can see that I have previously given permission for uh, local host to access the permission. So I've got the coordinates here in the console. You may need to, of course, allow permission on your side. But once you've got that permission there, we can see the coordinates are going to be 51 and negative 0.12. So these, of course, are the London, uh, you know, position. So yeah, you can uh, mock your location if you need to do some development work and you want to test uh, certain features, etc. Yeah, you can have a go and do that. And last on this list is going to involve filtering your console messages. So if you want more fine grained control over what gets displayed in the console while you're doing your development work, or you're just annoyed by the amount of uh, things that are going on in the console, you can click on the top left corner on this icon here, and it's going to allow you to filter your messages. So your errors is going to be your console.errors. Your warning is going to be console.warning and your info is going to be your console.info. This verbose one, I just double checked and according to MDN, uh, this might be for your console.debugs. But for the most part, you're going to be focusing on these errors, warnings and either the info or the user messages. So let's see how this works. If I go inside my JavaScript file, I can now just say console.log test message, okay? But I'll just finish it off here, console.info, this is an info message, okay? So let's just save this, go back in the browser here and we get those four messages in the console, different colors and so on. You can also filter by your errors, as we can see here, just shows the errors, warnings and the info. Now, info is also going to include your console logs, as we can see uh, just up here. But yeah, that is your five Chrome DevTools features, which you may or may not already know. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.